Good afternoon, and uh, this afternoon I just want to give you a conversation about family planning. Now, in August of 2021, Uganda established the Family Planning 2030 National Steering Committee to coordinate the development of the Uganda Family Planning 2030 Commitments and Accountability Mechanism. A consult was hired with support from the USAID and the Family Planning uh, uh, to facilitate the process. Now, Family Planning 2030, it's a transitional team that recommended that by 2030 family planning commitments making processes at country level should be all inclusive and encompassing at national and sub national level in order to cultivate ownership and understanding of the commitments with a bottom up approach. Now that Uganda has finalized the draft of a family planning 2030 commitments and accountability mechanism, there is need to go back to the sub national level and the national to disseminate an approved uh, family planning 2030 commitments and accountability mechanism it is imperative that the national level announcement of commitments it is culmination of the regional now to bring this conversation home in studios I have mr. Larry Charles the director of clinical services from the Ministry of Health and dr. Jotham Musinguzi the director general of Uganda National Population Council and Jocelyn Achola the program analyst she didn't come through but we have uh, we have, of course, Jocelyn here from the Reproductive Health Commodities from UNFPA. You can be part of this conversation on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. The hashtag is FP2030. My name is Andrew Chamagir, and the conversation has started. Good afternoon, my great panel. This is good afternoon. Um, it's, 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 it's an honor to have this conversation, Kwanzaa, with men. <laughs> on the deck. Mm. Uh, Jocelyn, it, it, it's an honor to see um, men be a part of this conversation. To you as someone who has been at the forefront of this, what does this mean to you? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, Viol. Mm. Uh, to me, this is a very privileged opportunity to mm. have two gentlemen by mm. my side yeah. discussing family planning issues for this yeah. country. Dr. Laro Schultz as the Director and Minister of Health and mm. Dr. Jotham Really, this tells you that um, the struggle to push family planning agenda mm -hmm. is not only women issues, mm. but also the men. And to me, mm. this shows that by having the two men and you the third man, yeah. <laughs> the third man, <laughs> then that means the men out there yes. should wake up. They should wake up. Dr. Msingus, let me start off with you. Why is family planning important for Uganda as a country? Well, uh, thank you, Andrew, and uh, good afternoon to listeners. Mm. Family planning mm. as a concept is a, an important thing for not only the families, the individuals, mm. the families themselves, the children, the women, their health, mm. but it's also important you know, that if they can, women can space mm. their children, mm -hmm. they are able to feed them better, they are also able to enjoy better health, mm. and those who have jobs, the women can also be involved in jobs if they space their children. So. Family planning is a very good thing at mm. that very level to okay. begin with. But also the benefits also translate into the whole household, mm -hmm. the husbands, the whoever else is in the family. Mm. And these benefits also translate at the national level. At mm. the national level, you have better uh, children to be looking after in the schools. Yeah. Uh, the women's health improves. You don't have to, they, they are not always sick and that type of thing. Mm. But also spacing of children also means that th on the whole there are generally fewer young people so do we we what we call you you decrease the dependency burden mm -hmm. that you don't have the country bogged down with too many young kids who are all dependent and yeah. that is very important for development as well so um, you're looking at it from the context of development and that makes a lot ab of sense ab absolutely absolutely uh, th that is much more you know exciting when someone thinks of it as a, a development issue, not a health issue. Dr. Lara here, we have observed a growth in teenage pregnancy during COVID-19 and all that. What are some of the key factors you've um, observed from where you sit and stand that could possibly have triggered this to go out of proportion? Okay, so thank you, mm. moderator, for that. And I'm first of all happy to be here to discuss mm. this very important point. Yeah a topic on family planning. Mm -hmm. Even before COVID, annually, we're having about 360,000 teenage pregnancies in this country. 
and this definitely has been been made worse now with what with covid mm. and definitely a key issues definitely is a breakdown from the routine access to age appropriate information mm -hmm. the schools were closed we initially we saw that homes were safe safe places but we've seen actually they have not been safe the school actually now it has turned that actually the schools are much more safer what safer places, places. Mm. there is also the aspect of lo loss for loss of jobs and mm. uh, meaning that young people who actually now had to turn up to <coughs> aspect which is like se exchanging sex for what for, for, money. for money and mm. definitely that results in do what <coughs> but also we we know we know very well that if you compare those who have not gone to school and those who have gone to school there's a disproportionate increase in yeah. teenage pregnancies mm. almost double pr the other one from about 17 percent to about 35 percent that's a huge so one. It's a huge so mm. those are all things which do definitely do what mm. but also you know uh, there are cultures which are n negative cultures where people have early marriages mm. actually child ha child marriages mm. so all those ones contribute to what contribute it dr laro when w when you talk about culture and especially with the um, early marriages how best do we need to engage this issue? Because it's a very white, big elephant in the room, and at times people just don't want to get into those uncomfortable conversations. But it's eating us like cancer, by and large. How do we engage the cultures that are advocating for child marriages? And not only that, cultures that believe that once a girl is above this particular age, they should get married and, and produce children. I think definitely the, the what we need to do here is that this development of the child goes beyond just the immediate yes, family, it's actually the community aspect. Yeah. And that's why even you see that even in our FP2030 commitment, we definitely need to engage with the communities, mm -hmm. with the cultural leaders, religious leaders. Yeah. I think <coughs> the aspect that we need to be able to raise our awareness on what needs to be what, because if we, these children do not go to school, mm -hmm. then we find that even if the, can the economy grows mm. and the growth rate of population is high, you will still find that yeah, you will we'll not, be able, you'll not be able to catch up. Mm. So I think you, it needs a multi-sector approach mm. to keep, keep girls at school. Because the moment you, th there's, a, there's known that progressively, if, the moment you if you keep a girl child in school for a longer period of time, mm. then you're able to protect that. The other aspect is that I, th <coughs> I think is the aspect of involvement of the leaders because these marriages take place in the community. Yeah. Right? Where are the leaders? Where are the leaders who should be able mm. to be protecting the what? The and sometimes there's connivance on if you had sometimes some of the child marriages. Mm. So I think awareness and seeing that everybody is involved in wow. this aspect. Um, just like when you hear this conversation, especially about culture and the leaders we have on the ground, we are in a patriarchal society. I strongly believe that the, the generation has changed where women like you are coming to the forefront. But the margin is still largely the men. How do we bring those men on board, the leaders themselves, that they're going to stand against these early childhood marriages? Mm -hmm. And um, they remind the men that a girl is not an equivalent of land or cows, but she's as human as you and you need to protect her strongly mm, thank you thank you so much and uh, really following what dr laro has said mm. let me start by giving you a story that i found in one of the communities yeah. two months ago i reached in this community and uh, well of course handling issues of family planning mm. and uh, it was a focus group discussion and yeah. one of the men came and said I don't even want to hear about family planning issues. Mm. For me, in my culture, it's all about cows. The more girls you have, the more the cows. More cows. Mm. One girl like this can fetch me a hundred cows. Yeah. Now you come here to tell us about family planning so that my wife should stop producing mm. to hell with you. And he walked away. Oh dear. So this tells you that we still have a lot of work to do. Yes, indeed. To engage men mm. and the cultural leaders down in the communities. Mm. Dr. Raro has just said that there is connivance. True. When these marriages are taking place, it is the cultural leaders mm. who actually connive with the parents and organize it very well. Mm. And then they would marry the girl off. True. Yet if we <coughs> bring them on board and they appreciate the usefulness of a young, of the usefulness of a girl, that mm. when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. Mm. Families now, like in my culture, they also used to believe that girls are just for fishing cows. Mm. 
But now, things... <laughs> really? The yes, the situation has changed. Mm. It's actually girls who are developing the homes of their That's parents. Yeah. And many families are now waking up. But probably we need to take more information to show that family planning is a developmental issue mm. and not just a matter of producing children or stopping mm. childbirth. Because the majority perceive it as... Stopping, stopping them from producing yes. but no it it's is all spicy. about helping you to regulate yes. the number of children that you want mm -hmm. the spacing mm. and when do you have them mm. so the men who are still out there to me i think this is the time mm. and like i said earlier <laughs> having three gentlemen with me <laughs> this, is already <laughs> <laughs> this is already this is already a benefit to me and yes. to the entire country it men who are mm. out there should be able to see this mm. and say Okay, I should also be able to, 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 to get out and fetch more men. Yeah. Like I heard you say last time yeah. in a meeting, yeah. you said you've moved from community to community, yes, fetching men mm. to join on board mm. and be able to appreciate that the, 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 the more you embrace family planning, the, the more, more developmental you, oh, you yes. become. So to me, I think it's all about how do we continue um, passing information mm. to the men. Tomorrow, as mm. we shall talk about it in our conversation, we've mm. tried to make sure we bring cultural leaders, and they mm. are going to commit. Yeah. And when they commit, we are going to follow them. What mm. are they going to do yeah. in their cultural institutions? Are they going to continue marrying off these girls, or they are going to pass information to their clan heads mm. until they get to families, for mm. people to appreciate that actually family planning is good to the mother, family mm. planning is good to the baby, family planning is good to the father, and the entire community, as well as the nation, mm. like Dr. Jotham said, mm. it's a developmental issue, and it would help our government actually to reap from that as a dividend. Mm. And at the end of it all, government will be able to allocate resources in something else According instead of just caring for children who are <laughs> sick and, you know, investing heavily on social services. Yeah. Yet he has other, there are other things that we need to do. You see how roads now have good roads? Mm. Government need to continue working yeah. on these roads, the infrastructure generally. So it is as families that are actually holding the government, that the government cannot stretch its hand longer uh -huh. to do what it's supposed to do. So to me, in brief, mm. let's pro pass more information yes. about family planning mm. and its benefits. Uh, before I, I let you go, Jocelyn, the, the men could get on board, but the women have their fears. Like I told you, the lady I found in Zynga, 17 children, mm -hmm. and she was worried that if she doesn't produce more, she's going to be banished from the home and all that. How do you address the fears from the women so that they can embrace the family planning methods mm -hmm. at play, but when they're not worried to lose their marriages as well? Yes, the tilt goes back to the men. Mm. She is worried because you the out. man is mm. going to send her away. Mm. But if the man was positive and tells her that, you know, mom, we mm. have 17 children, I would like us to stop. Mm -hmm. Or I want us to space the next baby. Mm. Then all will be good. So the whole thing is zeroing around the men, 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 men. <laughs> Dr. Msinguzi. These three men <laughs> seated here with me. Dr. Msinguzi, <laughs> when you hear this conversation, um, men are the biggest castigators of the failure to family planning to achieve the goal. And um, when you're talking about family planning 2030, what does it mean to you? Well, um, family planning 2030 mm. is a progression from family planning 2020. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in uh, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, His Excellency the President attended a summit in London mm -hmm. uh, where he committed to make sure that he promotes mm -hmm. the women's empowerment and equality mm -hmm. and, the, and their well-being and family planning and uh, reproductive health was one of the uh, avenues in which to support this. Mm. So thereafter, we developed with the other partners, uh, development partners, uh, communities, cultural leaders, mm. we developed commitments which we called FP 2020. Mm -hmm. In other words, that from 2012, we are going to have these commitments up which were declared up 2020 mm. and then that we shall review them after that. Mm. So 2030 is the review of the 2020 commitments mm. What have we learned? Mm -hmm. The lessons, mm -hmm. the good ones, the opportunities, but also the challenges. Mm. And now we are bringing them into 
2030 mm. commitments mm. with their own uh, accountability program. Like we have had Rosalind talking about mm. that they must be held ac accountable. Oh, yes. Yes, if the leaders, religious leaders are there, what we committed. So what have you done? We shall continue to government. To what audit. have we done? Mm. We as the, the, these, the parents, what mm. stakeholders, what have we done? So we have commitments wow. of FP 2030, mm -hmm. which we shall be reviewing along the line mm. and make sure that everybody is accountable mm. on what they committed themselves to. Dr. Lara, 2012 to 2020, as a country, what have you achieved with family planning, at least before we cross over to 2030? Because someone who's just joining the conversation will be like, okay, um, Dr. Msingh has said there was commitment in 2012 to 2020. Along those ways, um, what have we achieved as a country? Are we on a progressive curve, though? <laughs> as a country, definitely we're on a progressive <coughs> trend. But mm. the, the issue is the pace in which we're what? Mm. So we need to be able to accelerate. Mm. As, as you, you, are, you are aware that in the last demographic survey, now our total fertility rate is at 5.4. Four. Four. That's w which very alarming. Yes. Mm. But definitely for you to be able to be able to navigate to the middle income country, mm. you need to move this total fertility rate to about 2.4. Okay. Yeah. So if we are be able to achieve that, yes, they will move the modern contraceptive prevalence to mm. now about 30.8. 30.5. Yeah, the uptake is around there. So, mm. and then the unmet need mm. still st still stood by then at, at 20, 28. Mm. So now we are at almost like seven, 17. Mm. So we would want to want to move it from from 17 to, fif to what? 15 percent, mm -hmm. and the modern contraceptive to about almost 40 or, or 39 percent. Mm. So we've definitely been able to make inroads in in that, but mm. as as you said, for you to be able to achieve that, government had to make commitment. Yeah. And some of them was financial commitment, mm. uh, which it had to make. As a government were to, were to ring fence $5 million each mm. year on as aspect of providing family planning what? Mm. Commodities, mm. so that you are able to access, the access, access is improved mm. and address also the aspect of equity. Mm. So prog progress has been made, but okay. not, is not one, has not been very... Mm. But uh, Dr. Lara, why are these commitments very important for Ugandan watching there to hear? Because I mean, government has a mandate to make sure that we achieve the national goal as stipulated by the constitution. I mean, they, they plan this framework and they have to go through. Do they have to recommit themselves again about family planning? Why are these commitments in particular with family planning very important? Okay, this is quite, the commitment is important because definitely first of all, Uganda is not just a stand alone. You oh have yeah. definitely you are part of a global world. Mm. So people have to be able to see that are you progressively so there's aspect of visibility yeah. as a country and also we want to learn what are other countries what Do doing, doing in this yeah. area. And uh, at the same time we have to collaborate with global world, global partners, mm. but also we have to account to all the stakeholders because mm -hmm. this is a form of what w that if when we commit what is that for as, as we say that family planning is not just a, a health issue, it's a yeah. developmental, it's a development issue, a developmental yes, issues. Yeah. So if we have to develop, then we have to be able to do it. But also we have to foster learning and improvement. Mm. So we have to see that progressively, as I've told you, that we would want to move so that every lady can be able to make choice. Yeah. So that the children are produced when they are what? When so they're ready. So you Without fear. So you reduce all the unwanted what? Mm. Pregnancy so that... Oh, yeah. If like uh, when we talk of child spacing between one child and the next one, can we have at least the mother for two two years? She has not been able to do it, to so that she regains her body is what. Mm. But also at the same time, as somebody uh, mentioned the other day, he said that y you would not have time to actually to attend to your husband yeah. mm. if you spend all the time to work because okay. all the time the children will be making you dirty. Mm. So the husband actually will look, be looking you mm. negatively and probably will actually go for what? Of course, I'll have to find <laughs> another person <laughs> who suits my... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Andrew, in addition yes. to, uh, <laughs> to what uh, Dr. Laro has said, yes, and uh, he has said it well, mm. but additionally, the fact that uh, why should we want government to commit again? Mm. It is, is like if you... You, you, are, you are looking at like sharpening a plan. You, you've been planning, yes. government is planning roads and other health mm. services, but now we realize that uh, family planning is not moving as much as it should do.
the population growth mm. population growth is still very high mm. uh, we don't see the maximum benefits of family planning as we would like to see them mm -hmm. and as the dr Rohr has said we also want to compare with our uh, neighbors our peers you know the, in the region in mm. east africa region mm. in the african sub-saharan africa how are we doing so mm. we have a way of looking at uh, how each is performing so I it is a way of really sharpening on the focusing of an important aspect and uh, as we have talked i think uh, rosary and it touched on it. Mm. Family planning is not just family planning. Family planning is a health issue, is an economic issue, mm. is a development issue. Mm. Uganda is uh, having uh, a lot of young people. If these young people, we help them with education, we give them skills, mm. the girls are given opportunity to make sure that they can space the when they get married at the appropriate time yeah. and they are able to space their children, they can get I I involved in economic activities mm -hmm. like and compete with the men, what we have been talking about. Mm -hmm. So this is a development issue and it is particularly important mm -hmm. at this point in time in our development of this nation. And uh, we are talking about uh, this uh, Paris development model. Mm. We've been talking about engaging communities. From this the is a great opportunity for mm. you to say whenever we go down there to sit, we are going to engage these uh, leaders, cultural, mm. religious, but community leaders as well, mm. parents. I think it is a golden opportunity that we wow. should take it up. But Thank I you just wanted to add that mm. family planning is actually one of the key pillars of safe motherhood. Mm, so true. if you want to address all the aspects of safe motherhood, yeah, reducing matern plan. maternal mortality, teenage, mm -hmm. all those ones, okay. you have to be able to address what? Mm -hmm. family, family planning. planning. But uh, uh, just then before you come through, do, do, does our generation understand it that way when it gets to um, mortality issues and all that? I understand a couple of people times politicize everything, that the numbers are surging and all, um, especially Kawempe the hospital um, it, it's a very busy mm. factory for babies i should put it that way do we understand that we as the young generation do we understand that family planning the only way I can safeguard my wife or my sister is by making sure that she understands the values of family planning and how it goes okay <coughs> Toward the, the because we, we on Friday we actually the last week we yeah. had the the, the safe motherhood yes. week, mm. and one of the key engagement was on aspect of the young people and yeah. adolescents, mm. and you know very well that this constitute almost the adolescent ten to nineteen constitute almost twenty four of our population, mm. and it also they contribute the highest burden mm. of of maternal health mm. in the in the country almost over thirty percent, and even if you look at our maternal mortality. Mm. That, that that age group, in almost 10 to 19 to 24, constitute almost about 17.8%. Wow. So so this these are these are now we need to get all this evidence to be able to bring it to the what to life. bring it out so that mm. people be able to do what to mm. be able to see to see it so that I am sure when that will change their perspective mm. of how they interpret most of the things which they yeah. do. Mm. Wow. But well at the same time, mm. we need to also be able to, like, some of them definitely get into problems because they do not have access to information the or the to information, the commodities. The commodities and mm. all those aspects. So, oh yeah. as we address the information, but so we yeah. also be able to make sure that there's commodity security so that mm. people are able to access. Yes. Uh, Jocelyn, coming to that, um, given that you deal a lot more with commodities uh, of um, reproductive health and family planning, mm. in some spaces they are rare. Yes. Like the islands, mm. um, the fat rich areas, some people up at the top of Kabal, the health center three is 10 kilometers away, they could find the condoms and mm. all that. Mm. Given that there are those restraints, is there a model we are going to use that can possibly reach? Are we going to tap into the parish model? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Indeed, like my colleagues have said, the parish mm -hmm. model is coming to help. But commodities, we have to look at it from different, different yeah. mm -hmm. perspectives. Mm -hmm. We have, first of all, the procurement. Mm -hmm. As Dr. Lara said, one of the reasons why government is making this commitment is to ensure that it allocates the mm -hmm. five million US dollars annually. Mm -hmm. And this five million US dollars is to go to buy these commodities. Mm. So when we procure these commodities and more especially method mix, mm. all the methods that every woman would want, that yeah. if I walk in the facility, I want an IUD, I should find it there. Yeah. I want an implant, condom, whatever, I should mm. find it there. So that is one aspect of making sure 
commodities are available. procured mm. by the government. Mm. Then two, there is warehousing it. You all know we have our national medical, medical stores, stores mm. and the joint medical stores. Mm. So when the commodities have come and they are warehoused, mm. there is distribution to the last mile. That national medical store is supposed to plan, mm. when do I take the northern region, when do I take the Renzori region, and mm. make sure I distribute these commodities <coughs> to the facilities that you're saying yeah. they are 10 kilometers away from mm. where people live. Mm. So when national medical stores can distribute the different methods in those facilities, then the women will be in position to get. But also, we have the, the component of just managing the stock. Mm. You could find that national medical stores takes to the facilities, mm. but they are not managing it well. Some mm. of them actually leave the commodities expire in the facilities. And they are banned. One, maybe because they don't have the skills to be able to insert the IUD, mm. or two, because they wait for women to come and ask. But remember, these women are not medical professionals mm. to know that there is an IUD, there is an implant, there is a depo provera. It is the health worker to tell them and initiate that. So to me, I think the most important thing is to avail these commodities, but also be client, health worker initiated approach of counseling to make sure the clients who come are told about the different methods mm. and then they make decision. Dr. Raro said they should make choice of mm. whatever method they want to yeah. be able to space their pregnancies. Mm. So this is something that we must be able to do. And as UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund, mm. we contribute to, 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 to complementing the government's efforts in yeah. ensuring that we buy these commodities. Mm. We buy these commodities, government also buy, USAID also buy, and then we make sure it goes up to the last mile. Possible, yeah. So maybe the next thing that we need to do, how do we manage the logistics component? Because that's where Most the mess is. Most countries have electronic logistics management information system. Mm. In Uganda, how are we faring? So this kind of commitments that government is making is holding them accountable. To all those. We are holding Dr. Laro, <laughs> Dr. Jotham <laughs> accountable. Yes. That you said you are going to reach to the last mile yes. with the commodities. How far? Every year we want to report. Yes. How far have you? Yes. FP2030 is going to ask Uganda. Yes. Give us report of the progress of your commitment. So this opens the mind in mm. a way that, okay, we committed to reach to every woman, mm. but we are not doing it. Can we innovate around this? Can we come up with el electronic logistics management information system? Mm. We have so many platforms. Yeah. E-health, mm. where you can track. We have what is called Rx Solution. Mm. We have WOWs. All of these are mechanisms in place that can support government mm. to be able to monitor that from a warehouse at National Medical Stores, mm -hmm. the commodities went to Naguru Hospital, and from Naguru Hospital, actually, it went to Rosalind, who needs it in Chinawataka. Mm. And that is where government should go oh for yeah. the world to appreciate that, yes, Uganda is reaching that woman in mm. Chizinga, where you went. Yes. Good. That makes sense. Dr. Msinguzi, you are burning to respond to that, to, add, to, uh, to supplement on that. Yeah, because uh, uh, I think what Rosalind was saying, she knows something that uh, may be the public. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a Chair conflict here about, the co <laughs> about the commitment. <laughs> about the <laughs> commitments <laughs> and <laughs> the <laughs> national <laughs> medical stores. Mm. Uh, because I, I also work with the national medical stores yes. on the board. And mm. uh, what Rosalind is talking about is precisely what has mm. been mm. put mm. in place. Mm. In fact, uh, <coughs> another donor, mm. uh, USA, the actual American uh, embassy mm. uh, through USID, they have uh, provided, they have uh, complemented Uganda's efforts. Mm. And there is a, a, a digital mm -hmm. uh, pro program coming up mm. which will be able to ensure that you can literally get the procurement of the, of the drug from Europe. You will trace it all the way to national medical stores, mm -hmm. trace it around to the, the I went is on the roller going mm. on its way. If it reaches ginger, you know, those drugs are there. Mm. They have now reached Mbare. They have now gone to a health unit mm -hmm. in somewhere in Mbare. Mm. Yeah. It has been received by so and so. Wow. That person's telephone number is this one. And eventually rent is given to Rosalind, mm -hmm. it will also, as, the, as they say, the last mile. It will, it be will also be counted and yeah. you can know that it has been given. And we hope that uh, working, of course, with the Minister of Health and mm. what we are talking about when resources are there, mm. the, the, there is going to be gradual improvement yeah. in the provision of these services. And of course, this is not just the, the family planning commodities, yeah. mm. but, but it is all the drugs, whether it is for yeah. malaria, mm. for these the drugs, everything else. Mm. So that, that mechanism is coming. It 
is not yet completely the what not, but already the people, our people are training mm. in that, and we are trying to make sure that it, it does that. It's yeah. going to be extremely helpful, but nonetheless, we need to continue being vigilant, and yeah. that's why we are putting up this That makes sense. Th then br it brings us to the conversation, Dr. Lara. What they are alluding to is how to tap into the innovations with ICT to expedite this conversation to the last person, Montua Wansi, mm. very last person there. Mm. Um, the ministry is doing all the efforts around, but is the ministry in one or the other embracing the young, innovative um, brains we have in the country to make sure that this conversation reaches the last person? Yeah, I must say, definitely innovation is one way to do it, mm -hmm. to go, because as you, as you say that, this solves many things. Yeah. Because first of all, you will be able to know what is available in at stock mm -hmm. and also what is about to expire. Mm. But also at the same time, it can allow you to do what you call a redistribution. Mm -hmm. In case one, some of the places are able to run, run down, yeah. you can be able to move within the region and yeah. do it. But also the, at the same time, I wanted to hasten as part of it. We also, we also brought that one one partner, one warehouse, so that, so so we, we one in, so that each organization initially, particularly for our partners. Yeah. Definitely, we find that most of the PNFPs they are able to access from joint medical stores. Yeah. Then the other ones are able to do it. So, when, when like now, a, if a partner goes for outreach, they will use the commodities at the facility instead of them moving initially with what? Mm. With the com commodities. Wow. <laughs> so, these are so that we can be able to count, so that we don't do double counting. Yes. Mm. The partner is reporting, and then also the facility is what? Is reporting. So, innovation is really the way to go because. It's also an accountability mechanism because yes. we would also want to see how these things really reached where to the desired one. Mm. Person. So at the same time, it will enable us because, as you said, there are still pockets which are underserved, which you did mention. Yeah, the but media does it. Based on that, you can be able to see which are those areas so that you address aspect of equity. Mm. Because as you said, that even when you are talking of 5.4, there are places where uh, the average fertility rate is at, is at 8. Yeah. Mm. Rosalind can tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it's not actually like this is an average. Yes. Mm. Mm. So in Kampala, probably in Kampala, I think they are about two, three. Yeah, Kampala is low, but when you go rural community, mm. it's higher. Wow. Yeah. So um, the conversation seems to be going on. Those joining us, just uh, from wherever you're watching from, they're having a conversation about the family planning 2030. And tomorrow they are launching this. Uh, Rosalind. Let's talk about this. What is the objective of the planned launch for um, the November 3rd road? Okay, thank you. Um, like we've already discussed, mm. the main reason why Uganda is launching the FP 2030 mm. is to create awareness, yeah. to ensure that everybody gets to know what is this FP 2030 about. How is it benefiting me as an individual? Mm. Because the government is aware. Government has done it. It has mm, indicated the areas of concern. Mm. But what about my sisters and brothers out there? Mm. So by, by launching and blowing it, they get to know. <coughs> but also globally, uh, all countries that subscribe to FP 2030 mm. are supposed to launch at national level. Oh. So that when they launch, then they are trying to, 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 to say that, yes, we are now ready. Mm -hmm. Start monitoring, start tracking us. Mm. We committed on one, two, three. Mm -hmm. We want to reduce teenage pregnancy mm. from probably 25% to 10%. Yeah. Monitor us. So by doing this as Uganda, as a country, mm. we are trying to show the world that we are ready we are not going to lag behind. Mm. We're going to ensure that everybody in this country who wants a contraceptive must, must get, get it. it. True. And if he wants it, NMS must provide for yes. it. Yes. That is it. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dr. Msikwazi, when we launch out all this, it's from the national perspective. Me, as a Ugandan, from the grassroots level, who is watching this, following this, the conversation on the other side, has the team that is planning about this thought about how i'm going to be a part of it from the village level that today they are launching this the roadmap of a 2030 family planning 2030 what are my call to actions as a citizen besides me spacing my children and you know and having enough children i can cater for 
But what's my role within my community? As you people at Serena or whatever, God knows who as you're launching, what is my role as a Ugandan? Well, the, this launch, actually, you'll be pleased to know the launch is not just at the national level. Yes. It is it's going to global. be, it's, it's global, uh, the global will come later. Yeah. But for now, we are doing the national mm. together with the, in our own areas, mm. the zones, nice. different groups are going to know. Mm. And as Rosalind has been saying, this is at the national level, yes, but even those regions which have uh, been selected, mm. people will know that this is going on. And as she says, we want as many people to know Mm. This process is going on, the benefits are these, mm. the benefits are that, we are going to have accountability mechanisms, yeah. so if uh, things are not going very well, mm -hmm. you have to ask Account. for accountability. Mm. If National Medical Stores is not delivering, who should be asked and what is the mechanism for doing so, because once this digital, the information is going around, yeah. The RDCs come to know, the, the, the DHOs come to know. Mm -hmm. So the, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of benefits if awareness is raised and people know where to go to find out where their things are. So it is very important. Mm -hmm. Even when the global is being done, uh -huh. to also be filtering to know that the local people should be able to know. Today. And as, as we keep talking about uh, this uh, parish development model, mm. I think as we move forward, once this, play, this is on implemented on the ground, mm. it is going to give us a lot, a lot of opportunities to make sure we can reach communities at almost instantly, at one go. Mm. And, and we can learn that what you can do in one parish is mm -hmm. what you can also do in the other ones. Then we can start structuring things which are more or less uniform mm. and we, we perfect them so that we are able to deliver services to the mm. country more in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a much better way. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Dr. Larutun, so after the launch, what happens next? Because I know government will go in overdrive and everyone will be doing what they should be doing. Minister of Health will support where it needs to be doing. But what should Ugandans expect after this launch of the 2030 agenda is, is rolled out? Okay, first, uh, as part of the, the, the launch, mm. as you looked at that, definitely first, uh, on the forum, was definitely it's part of government ownership. Yes, of course. Because the, the is, is key mm. but also what is different from the partial this launch is that the commitment is going to be signed by the two ministers mm. the minister of health and also the minister of what finance. of finance because mm. that's for you to be able to operationalize it you need resources yes. mm. but uh, i am looking at a definitely we now need to fast track because mm -hmm. already the clock is ticking because mm. we were talking of 2030 already 2021 is already down the yeah, one already so we need to fast track the implementation of this commitment mm -hmm. to by all by all stakeholders mm. so that's why you see that when you look at the commitment it will be signed by the young people the cultural leaders the religious yes. leaders mm. i think we we had missed up the media oh i'm He's there, there for the media you, you're there <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> for the media yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the one representing I, the I media i am championing this conversation so, you, <laughs> so, yes. so actually we leave nobody behind yes exactly. so that you're already part of it. Mm. As they used to say, that there's nothing for us without what? Without uh, us. So we also yes. want that you get involved. Mm. Yeah. And then definitely from there, we want to get who are the champions. Mm. So definitely you'll be the media champion, we want mm. to get a media champion. I mean, like you, you have the Archbishop, she's mm. been one of the key champions on yeah, public yeah, planning. Yeah, yeah. There are people who advocate. Mm. So na those, that's now where we want that, we can we be able to do the unfinished agenda from 2020 mm. so that by the time we now do the 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 other aspect of monitoring we've made progress progress because yes. the bottom line is progress mm. Rosie, when w when you look at this conversation it's 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 now getting much more heated it's it's interesting that we 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 are rolling this out yeah when you think of it when government has done all this and um, the partners have said okay now let's go out in the void and we do what we should be doing can we highlight some of the key bottlenecks that have possibly um, hindered us to achieve the 2012-2020 agenda? So that now we're in position to rectify mm. and we strike better. Yeah, thank you. Um, like Dr. Lara has said, inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. In the previous uh, commitment of mm. 2012, which was spearheaded by Dr. Jotham, and mm. he traveled to London with His Excellency, and wow. we made the commitment. Thanks for lobbying. Yes, he's a hardworking mm. young man. <laughs> 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 so from that commitment, <coughs> um, mm. there was an oversight that mm. we didn't include everyone. Yeah. We just looked at government. We said the president has committed, and it will be done. Mm. But it wasn't the case. 
One area that was so striking for us and which made probably partners to rise up was the financial commitment. Yeah. Government committed that would do allocate the five million US dollars annually. Mm. They could do allocate something that wasn't five million, mm. but even when they allocated that, mm. it wasn't spent for family planning. Mm. So we left out the key stakeholders who are the parliamentarians. To because lobby. parliamentarians are the ones who pass these budgets yes. in parliament. Mm. So somehow we forgot to involve them. We brought them at the end of it. Mm. If you remember, colleagues, we, we bring them and say, now government, we've done the tracking, and out of the five million, they have ah. only spent 1.6, and then the parliamentarians were like, you didn't how tell did, us. How did you get to that? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. you didn't tell us. Oh, yes. So that is your business. Deal with but it. this one, mm. we've involved them 100%, nice. and tomorrow they are leading on it. Yes. So inclusiveness was lacking mm. in the previous one. Two, Mm. Uh, we also um, did not know exactly how to go about it mm. because we discovered much later that in the Minister of Finance that is what is called vote 116 mm. and that is the vote what that takes in money yeah. for for reproductive health for mm. maternal health and all that so Allocation money of funds. is lumped there yes. and it is also spent in that lump sum mm. and we didn't know how to figure out so by the time we discovered again mm. by tracking yeah. it was too late now this time we are saying You're more we ready. want that million earmarked yeah. for family planning commodities that will then go to JMS for Dr. Jotham to guide on how yes. we make sure it gets to the last mile. Also, the young people, mm. we have the magnitude of the problem of the young people, mm. the high teenage pregnancy, the yeah. lack of jobs, and all this. Mm. They are now left for you in the media. Yeah. We were in the reception, and there were funny things, and Dr. Jotham made fun. Uh -huh. that, eh, so this is your audience. <laughs> she said, you know, they love music. Yes. Now, the young people were left out. Yeah. In that much as we said we wanted to increase access to SRH for mm. the young people, mm. but they were not on the forefront. Now we've brought them, they actually led. Consultative process was so involving, mm. and they told us what they wanted. Mm. So Dr. Jotham and Dr. Laro mm. made sure they coiled that into a manageable commitment mm. that mm. they will be tracked for. Manageable Come commitment. the end of 2022, yes. the world is going to ask where how far have you gone with yeah. the young people so to me i think <coughs> we had um, we were not prepared yeah. like any country went to commit and we thought it was just a matter of committing we come mm. back and try to but we it, it had a lot mm. but one thing which impressed me was why i wanted to add mm. was the passing of the national population council yeah Hmm? Yeah. Remember, it used to be there was a good sake. political will there. Yes. Mm. So when it was uh, passed, and now it is National Population Council, mm. that was actually the first achievement yeah. that the 2012 uh, mm. commitment realized, and yeah. we were all very happy. And Dr. Jotham remained strong, Saved. and he kept driving the agenda forward. Yes. yes. And probably that's why you still see him strong yeah. in driving this agenda forward. Mm. So <laughs> much as there are loopholes. But, but we learned. Yeah, but, uh, but also in <coughs> addition to what Rosalind has said, yeah. I, it is true that uh, the commitments of, uh, of uh, FP 2020 mm. were the beginning. Yeah. As you had, uh, head of state went to London. To London yeah. The commitments were ma made. Mm. Uh, little did we know that there were those the weaknesses that uh, Rosalind has talked about. Mm. But we also know that the policy environment uh, was not necessarily as strong. Uh, the National Population Council, the Minister of Health, there are a number of policies that need to be also in the place to be mm. supportive yes. of what is being done. Mm. As you know, you'll be pleased to know that uh, last year the cabinet passed the National Population Council yep. and with the a roadmap for demographic dividend. Demographic dividend is that, uh, uh, is that ro the, the, the we, on, uh, we want to make sure the country is on the roadmap, mm. on the trajectory to make sure that it can benefit, it can harness the mm. demographic dividend. In other words, these young people, they must have education, they must have skills, they must be healthy, but also they must have jobs. So uh, those are the type of things that we are now going to be grappling with in mm. FP 2030 
to make sure that the policy environment is very strong, robust, yeah. to support these issues we are talking about. Mm. The issues that uh, Rosalind has talked about, the weaknesses, uh, leaving some people behind. Now nobody should be left behind, mm. leaving nobody behind. Yeah. Make sure everybody uh, there is now accountability mechanism. The commitments of tomorrow have also an accountability framework accompanying mm. it. Mm. So we are, we are learning, we have, we have gotten uh, better, we, we know better now. Mm. Okay, um, the conversation is still going on and those online, I have some uh, tweets here coming from Douglas Mpamize <coughs> Kingdom, you say on Twitter. He says, we don't need family planning in courts in Uganda. <laughs> You'll understand this statement if you use your mind to think. <laughs> So those who are saying that we don't need family planning in Uganda, if you really think it through a lot, mm -hmm. you'll understand that actually we needed it like uh, 20, 30 years ago if we were to have this conversation cascade mm -hmm. far and beyond. Dr. Lara, we learned from the mistakes we did in the very first one, the couple of things that actually came through and they're very positive. I love the inclusion bit where we have the people with our disabilities, we're having the media, we're having the youth, the legislators and all. But what changes do we need as a country so that we can have the family planning uh, services much more accessible by the citizens? Okay, thank you for this question. Mm. I, there are a number of <coughs> things definitely which we need to be able to do differently. Yeah. We want definitely, there are aspect of provider capacity which mm. we think that we need to be able to enhance provider capacity so that almost every health worker uh, at all levels mm. can be able to give information mm -hmm. but also provide <coughs> the planning. Mm. We'll continue to engage with leaders leadership at all levels, okay. the cultural leaders, the training institutions, mm. communities, political leaders, because we need to mobilize for the uptake. Because mm. even if we g get all this money and the, you, you address the supply side, you need to be able to also address the, the demand what? Mm. The demand side actually is, is key. Then the aspect which we have to do differently, we need to be able, we have already known that there is this group they call the, the, the adolescent and young people. Yeah. We have to go to them. We no longer want to, that they move to us. It's mm. us and it will be us to do what? To go to, to, go to them. Mm. But also we need to be able to address aspect of equity because there are those, as, as you said, those uh, dark sp spots which are, are yeah. not accessed, mm. hard to reach areas. Mm. We need to be able to, but at the same time, we also need to be able to ensure commodity security. And mm. even during when we had COVID, I think at least as a country, we're happy that commodities were what? Available. Mm. We need to leverage on the community health workers mm. because not now they should be able to provide a package so that if a, a woman or whatever, we brought in self-injection so that you can be able to access. People yeah. just need to be able to to train. Mm. But at the same time, we need data. We need to capture this information. Mm. We need to do electronic so that If everything is moving electronically, you can be able to know what is the available stocks at each of these places. Mm. But bottom line is definitely that is a multi-sectoral thing, approach. Oh. We, we need everybody involved. Mm. The beneficiaries, the providers, the political leaders who are, so that we need to understand. Mm. But at the last one, I think, is aspect of that we need to integrate family planning to all whatever we do. In so HIV AIDS, we have to have family planning. Mm. In others, we need to be able to see that. So that even when you come to outpatient, there should be someone that at least ask, do you need also family what? Family planning. Family yes. planning. The Other. same way we, we did with HIV so that to have a, do you need a test? Mm. We also need to be able to see that. The same approach. The same approach. Makes mm. a lot of sense. Boaz Mwinje in um, around Le Catre. Mm -hmm. says that are you aware that people here the mine the miners of salt they wear condoms when they're going to mine not for sexual pleasure though so for what um he goes ahead and says that they use it to protect themselves from the heat that comes from the steam that comes from the the lake um that it could make them um impotent <laughs> now that is misuse of the of the commodities, commodities doctor. Yes. Mm. As a minister of health, are you addressing <laughs> these blind spots? I think definitely first I'm happy for for this feedback. This Boaz, is <laughs> this, is, this is information which <coughs> is important. Mm. I, I think definitely there's still a lot of information asymmetry. Yeah, we really need to be able to get information mm. because as as you say that, it look like someone does not know what's the intention of of yeah. of the what 
of the condom because mm. it's not just about pregnancy it's also yeah. stis mm. but uh, you can be able to see that it's being used for one so i think we for need to identify mm. so i think we need to be just like we've been having risk communication in covid mm. we also need to be able to see how can we be address the communication aspect in that okay as a finalizing this conversation rosalie you want to add on that yes Briefly? i just wanted to say that <coughs> so to Boas, but first of all that is already risk to the men yeah putting on a condom all day long I it's know. a risk to them yeah. secondly they are working in a uh, environment that is hot yeah. and that condom in any way would not protect them from the heat True. so it's lack of information mm. i request Boas, if you're listening that please tell the men in the <laughs> community where you are that um, that is wrong they need to just dress normally <coughs> or get other gadgets yeah. that can protect them, mm. but not a condom. Condom is not meant for that. Boaz, I'll give you my word. We'll find some time. I'll follow you on Twitter and we'll come to in your area. We have more of this conversation. Okay. As we're finalizing, Rosalind, what are um, your action points to government and the other players? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm happy that I'm seated here with government from the UN family. Mm. We have a lot that we do. We are washdogs, we yes. are everything. <laughs> but uh, to me, I think we are partners because yeah. as UN family, we support government, we mm. complement its work, and we help them really to fix a mm. few where they are weak links. Mm. So the action here is that um, as we commit that we are going to deliver on the various strategies that we have set, let's actually try and work towards that mm. and you're not going to do it as government alone mm. you're going to do it with partners yeah. we have civil society we have international organization mm -hmm. we have the UN family mm. we have the bilaterals mm. all these are ready to work with the government mm. because our ultimate goal is to make sure the people of this country get the services that they deserve and to me from the fp 2030 commitment mm. The clearly as it has been set out, mm. we are ready to support government to achieve that. Well, thank, thank you so much, Rosalind. And Dr. Musinguzi, what could be your parting shots to <coughs> us, the Ugandans, give, especially the men, comrade, especially the men? <laughs> well, uh, thank you. I have a message both for the men, but also for uh, the women, the young people, yes. and uh, our policymakers as well. Yeah. Uganda has a, a population growth rate of 3% per annum. Mm. This population growth rate is uh, already high mm. and uh, is good enough to continue ensuring that Uganda has an increasing population. Mm -hmm. And we in the population field, we will come the population to increase. Mm. What we are talking about, we want it to increase at the rate that we can manage with the economy. Uh, family planning is one method that helps us deal with that, but also helps us deal with health issues at uh, the individual level, the child, the mother. Even the owner of the household, the head of the household, and so uh, family planning helps the individuals, children and women, mm -hmm. and the family, but also the benefits of family planning because they go to reduce dependency ratios. Mm -hmm. It reduces on uh, many kids who are, if we can space our children, mm -hmm. then we make sure that the women are healthier, the children are healthier, and we also deal with the dependency ratio. In which case, the government can have more monies to devote to other things other than just d d trying to pay attention to dependency issues. Yeah. So family planning is a health issue, is an economic issue, mm. is a development issue and needs to be supported by all. Thank you so much, Doctor. Dr. Lara, your parting shots as government. By the way, we really want to thank the government for the support it has pulled through. Well, as, as government, mm. the, our issue is not really necessarily the big population. Mm. It's the issues of growth of the what? The, the rate of growth of population. Mm. That's what we're talking about. Let's let it grow at a manageable what? A manageable rate. Mm. But my concrete statement is that this is let everyone get involved. Mm. That's why we want everybody get invo involved. Mm. And we want that every person who wants a family planning method should be able to access it. Mm. So that whatever sh she does, she'll be able to enjoy her reproductive health, but also at the same time be able to make choices so that we have children w which they have made choices to have them. Wow. The key word there is choices. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud, you have something? Yes, yes, and also to, I think, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Lara has said, mm. 
uh, the government, we, we, we really want to, for us, the population must continue to increase mm -hmm. at the rate that we can manage. So mm -hmm. that's important. Okay. And we also want to appeal to our development partners uh, whether it's USID or UNFPA, mm. they should also know that's what we are doing. We want them to continue supporting us. Yeah. This particular mm. uh, event, UNFPA has also done a very commendable uh, job. Mm. It's not only Rosalind here, but mm. even the representative. Mm. Uh, there is uh, the current representative, uh, Madame uh, Susan Mandong. Mm. She has been very, very strong on mm. this. So we want to thank UNFPA in a very special way mm. on this, but also appreciating all the other donors who yeah, have been players. working with us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you have it. The conversation comes to an end. And thank you so much for being a part of it from wherever you've been watching and listening from. I want to urge you, my fellow Ugandan, that you have a job to play if we are to achieve a family planning 2030 vision and mission. I, for one, I pledge and I commit that I'm going to cascade these conversations to the far ends of this country. But your call to action is to live to these commitments. I'm Andrew Chamagiro. Good afternoon.